everyone I'm coming at you guys today with my review of Love and Hip Hop episode 6 Love and Hip Hop Atlanta I don't know how this review is going to sound to you guys how it's going to look because my laptop is pretty much dead I have to take it to some place to get it fixed I think there's a virus so I don't know how to ship it off to HP or what but we're going to get to the bottom of it I'm using my husband's laptop right now so I don't know how this is going to sound, so I don't use this one. But anyways, I don't really have too much to talk about on this episode, but I did write some notes. There are some things that we must go in depth on. You know how I do. I have to talk about these trolls. Um, First of all, Jocelyn. Okay. Jocelyn had her photo shoots, and I mean, if her rap career does not go anywhere, at least she can become a contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race. That photo shoot gave me every bit of RuPaul's Drag Race, and if RuPaul himself was watching Monday night's episode, trust with a plus, RuPaul would have been proud, okay? Um, Stevie J, of course, he came walking in all doped up. And he just went off on Jocelyn because Mimi told him that Jocelyn threatened her. So he went off on Jocelyn about that. Um, Scar and Bucky met up. You know who Scar is. Uh, Mama Dean. We're going to call her Scar from now on. If you're not following me on Facebook, the link is down below. Uh, along with my link to Gumbo Talk blog spot I have to update that one and also to Twitter so on Facebook I did see a picture and I shared it on my Facebook page and it's just like a comparison of Stevie J um Mama D and Bucky with the Pringles guy Scar and I forgot the name of the character for Bucky but they really do look like those characters so that's why we're going to call uh, Mama D Scar because she looks like Scar. So Scar and Bucket met up and when I tell you upon arrival Mama D's tongue appeared to be erect when she saw Bucky. So they talked about the whole asthma attack situation and then Bucky she's trying to figure out if Erica spent the night over there so that's all they talked about. Carly and Mimi they met up and they talked about the whole altercation between Carly and K. Michelle in the previous episode. Carly told Mimi that she felt like Mimi let her down and she didn't know that K. Michelle had some beef with her and then Mimi was like well I thought you knew that you know K. Michelle felt some type of way about you. And so after that, Mimi, she told Carly that Stephen J and Jocelyn are sleeping together. And in fact, Jocelyn was pregnant for Stevie J. You know how Mimi do it. She would talk to a mosquito. She would talk to an ant if the ant would stop to listen. She would tell the ants everything that happened between Stevie J and Jocelyn. So that's all that happened there. Uh, Kay Michelle met up with Carly. They discussed what happened on the previous episode regarding the altercation. Um, it was Carly's idea to meet up with Kay Michelle, so Kay Michelle went to meet with her. Uh, what was so funny is that Kay Michelle, when she walked into the studio, because that's where uh, Carly was having the photo shoot, um, she told her, uh, well, she told the receptionist of somebody that she was there to see Lumpy. And, you know, they just, just basically discussed what happened on the previous episode. Um, Kay Michelle told. Uh, Carly that when she googled her she saw brands of vinegar and that's basically all that happened right there Jocelyn and Queen was talking Queen is Jocelyn's best friend and Queen when I tell you Queen looked like Miss Cleo she looked like she studied practices every type of voodoo under the sun she looks very scary looking um, Jocelyn says that she's a man eater she has it tatted on her shoulder she says she's going to pack up um, CBJ's things along with his Ciroc and just send it to Mimi's house and tell Mimi look this is your man stuff she don't want to deal with CBJ anymore she stated that she spoke to the producers behind his back so she, and she said that she has to do what she got to do to make sure that her career um, goes in the direction that she wants it to go to she said her success is not determined by CBJ so that's what she's doing Rashida had her video premiere at a, a club um, some people came up, but it wasn't a lot of people. It wasn't to Rashida's expectations. You know, Rashida, she's thinking like Beyonce, but she's on an underground budget, okay? 
Now, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, demanding the best for yourself. But when it comes to your husband being your manager, I mean, it's putting a strain on your marriage. So, what Rashida needs to do, this is just my opinion, Rashida needs to decide if she wants her marriage or if she wants her career. She cannot have both when it comes to her husband being her manager because it's not going to work out. I mean, there's some marriages that can do it and there's some of them that can't, but this right here looks like a prerequisite for divorce court. So, I don't know if it's just me, but Rashida's husband, I just can't looking at his neck his Adam's apple looks like an Adam's cantaloupe um, Scrappy went to Erica's house he took everything out of this girl's house okay he had a moving truck outside he had movers taking out leather sofas and stuff like that there was a table or something in the corner he's probably taking that he probably took the bed as well all i saw in the living room was an entertainment center with a regular tube television and there was fine pieces of debris scattered about all over the floor so obviously he probably took the vacuum cleaner as well Scrappy is not going to have good luck from taking all that furniture out of his house because his daughter is living there as well. What is his daughter supposed to sleep on? What is his daughter supposed to sit on when she's watching cartoons on that tube television? She, I mean, she's going to sit Indian style on the floor. Like, that is so wrong. Scrappy is not going to have good luck for that. And then Scrappy is running game to Erica, basically trying to con um, secure a place to stay if things doesn't work out between him and Bucky or with the next random chick. So he's telling Erica that the things that he told her on the previous episode, you know, when he broke up with her, is the things that he wanted to say, but it didn't come out in the right way. So he's telling her that he still want to work things out and all that type of stuff, and then he closed it by saying, you're going to take me off of child support. First of all, Scrappy, you are a deadbeat. You are trying to skip out on paying your rental furniture bill from Renter Center or Aaron's Rent to Own. Trust with a plus, the manager for the location for where you rented those items from. If they were watching Monday night's episode, trust me, they contacted local authorities and there's probably a warrant out for your arrest for theft and fleeing with stolen merchandise. Trust with a plus on that one. And then you're going to tell your baby mama that, um, are you going to take me off of child support? You are a deadbeat, like for real. I know you're not hurting on no money. I know you're probably not making any money from your music because let's face it, there's nothing on the radios, none of the DJs are talking about you, no one's on any media uh, outlets or whatever talking about you, you're not even on 106 and Park, I mean there was a video a few months back. But uh, a, well, a couple of months back or something like that, but it's not on a countdown as of right now. So, I mean, I know you are hustling. I know you have another way of getting money. You're screwing Bucky. Bucky is walking around with every horse's tail from the Kentucky Derby on top of her head. Trust with a plus. If you have her run around a couple of laps, bam, you'll make a couple of thousand in a matter of minutes. So I know you're not hurting for no money. So, I mean, you just a deadbeat. That's just basically it. And then after he left, she goes to the closet and she's just packing up his shirts and stuff like that. And then a the camera guy, he got a good view of the closet floor. When I tell you that closet floor has fine pieces of debris, weed seeds, and roach eggs all over the floor... Scrappy, you are so wrong on so many levels. Carly, she went to Bazzino's house. And you know Carly went there with a mission. She's a woman with a mission. Let's just face it. She's a woman with a mission. She's trying to screw for tracks. Okay? That's her mission. She's screwing for tracks. So you know she pulled out her best pair of bikini cut the pin diapers for this date. You know she's built like a box. She's built like SpongeBob. She's, her butt looks like an upside down Dorito. So she went there with her best pair of bikini cut, the pins diaper. So she went to his house for the first date, if you want to call it a date. And he supposedly cooked this candlelight dinner. 
and he's running game at her and then he told her to come sit on his lap because he had some things he wanted to give her so she sat on his lap and he showed her well he gave her her gifts and one of the gifts was a film book that he purchased from amazon.com or perhaps he won a bid on ebay and then he gave her this uh, box that was gift wrapped and he told her it was something for her and then she started kissing him and trust with a plus before the night was over she pulled the crotch of her Depends diaper to the side and she let him hit okay Rashida she went to speak outside management she had a meeting with Deb you know who Deb is that is Waka Flocka's mother and she basically broke Rashida down point blank period the Zeno with Carly's overactive bladder and pissed the pin's diaper on his breast. He met up with Crackhead Shorty. We're going to call Stevie J Crackhead Shorty. He came up in there and, and, and they were talking and the Zeno was talking about the fact that he liked Carly and that he's going to meet her mother. So obviously he's going to go where Carly is residing right now. You know, she's probably neighbors with Greg from the Atlanta Housewives down at Sunny Acres Nursing Home. So he's going to meet with her parents and he's just like wild about her and all this type of stuff. So um, Stevie J, Crackhead Shorty, he was just like... <laughs> He was just like talking about Jocelyn. He was talking about Mimi and he was talking about he had a plan to get Mimi back and he's gonna get her alone and that was just it. So Okay. Um Erica's mom and Erica met up for lunch and Erica told her mom what um that asthmatic thug Scrappy told her about the child support situation and Erica's mom basically gave it to her one hundred percent and she told her, Look He's going to be paying child support whether he like it or not. And that's it. Rashida and her husband had a talk about her meeting with Deb. And they, you know, it was very emotional because she went behind his back. She should have talked to him first. And she should have told him that she was unhappy with his management and that she wanted to seek other management but she went behind his back she didn't let him know and so after she had the meeting she told him and so it was very emotional like I said this is a prerequisite for divorce court and I hope that don't happen to them because out of all reality shows that we've watched thus far those two I mean they're married and they seem like they have their marriage intact but when it comes to the business it kind of derail everything else with their marriage. So I mean, it's like oil and water for them. So I don't. I think she should choose her marriage, and then talk to him about outside management, and just have somebody else working with her on her career. She shouldn't bring that home with her husband because obviously they get those two tangled up together, and it's just a messy little thing there. So. Jocelyn and Mimi met up. Jocelyn apologized to Mimi for all the threatening text messages and she said that, you know, she's not really to blame. She said that Stevie J is to blame because Stevie J have her thinking one thing and while he's telling Mimi another thing. So that's basically all that happened. Like I said, it wasn't really too much to talk about on this episode. Um, but, you know, I really wanted to talk about the Zeno and Carly situation. I definitely wanted to talk about Scrappy, the asthmatic thug, and how he stole all that furniture out of his baby mama's house. He's a deadbeat father. And then he's on Twitter talking about he don't like the fact how VH1 is playing him and he can't wait for the reunion because he's going to blast everybody so I can't wait for the reunion guys so until my next review guys bye